It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Miami Dolphins. All that and more coming up next. It is a tropical, hot summer afternoon, so staying hydrated is going to be key for the players, the fans, even the commentators as we are at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Coming up, we've got a good one here in the AFC as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, the Dolphins, they've got some high hopes for 2023. They feel like they've got the pieces to make a run. They need a little bit of health, but they think they can be right there in the AFC East. And they'll want every game to be a track meet because speed is their calling card. If they're able to sprint out there ahead of people and make them chase, they'll be tough to reel in. And then for our visitors, the Broncos, 5-12 and 12 was their record last year. One of the bigger underperforming teams in the league. Injuries to guys like Javante Williams certainly hurt. But what do you think they need to do, Charles, to turn it around? They need to build a more cohesive offensive line. They've struggled in that spot for the last couple of seasons. And a defense that's often very good has to tackle better in the open field. Here's Will Lutz ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. And this taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback. Now it is fourth NFL season to a tongue of Iloa. And when you watch him play, everything just looks like it comes so naturally to him. When he's dialed in and finds that zone, passes are crisp, he sees the field really well, and he takes charge as the leader of this offense. Two and a throw right away. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Now a second and ten. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And he'll get this into the hands of Braxton Berrios. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off, and then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that will bring up second down. They'll run for the first time with Raheem Mostert. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That burst good for 20 and a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. To a hit, and the ball is out. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it, able to retain possession. That was big for them. So they keep the football, but now face second and long. Here's Tug of Iloa to throw. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. Here 
Here comes the seventh play in this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Here's Tua. He'll get this into the hands of Mostert. Shreds him with a stiff arm. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. And as you're game planning as a staff, you go through all the different ways you can neutralize the other guys' pass rushers. Extra linemen, leave a tight end in, bring the running backs back in to block. Or you can do this, a little simple screen pass, and it works to perfection. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. Open man is Waddle complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short gain. Two and a throw again. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. So play number 10 now coming. It's been a long opening drive, but this is third down. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Raheem Mostert, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And they do exactly what they wanted to. Opening drive, and they get into the end zone. They do it on the ground. And not only is the person lugging the ball happy, of course, because he got it into the end zone. How about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him? They have to feel great about themselves. Stick it in the end zone on a running play. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket, and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their own 22. Now the third year man back and healthy hits Javante Williams. And a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Second down and six now from the 26. Now it's Wilson. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. A couple of veterans, Wilson to Sutton there for the Bronco first. Now we give up the middle to Williams. 
That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. On second down, Williams. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Four yards the pickup, first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. And that one never got off the ground. He's going to be stopped up well behind the line of scrimmage. A nice stick and stop for a loss here from Jalen Phillips. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Now Wilson on second down. A throw over the middle taken in by Troutman. Touchdown, Broncos! Adam Troutman, 26 yards. And the Broncos respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Will Lutz on for the point after. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied had it each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here is the kicks away taking it about the one and he returns this to the 22 and now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return we'll get an update when we come back to Miami The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Third and five. From the gun, it's Tua. 
Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Partner, we've got ourselves a ball game, and those guys on defense, they came to play. Slipped up on their first series, but they're definitely settling in now and letting it be known that points won't come so easy again. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. Back deep for Denver, the rookie Marvin Mims. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Jerome Baker there on the tackle. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's second and 10. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. They'll come up now, third and nine. From the gun, it's Wilson. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Jalen Phillips, the former first-rounder, getting in there for the sack. He also looks like he may be a long-term centerpiece of the Miami defense. Put up seven sacks last season. The Finns, they're hoping he can become a game wrecker here in year three. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. It's taken to the 26. Oh, he shifts past him. A nice work on the return as he gets about 15 yards back. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. Trouble and he's taken down. They get to him for a loss of four, and it brings up third down on the sack. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More to a hit, and the ball is out. Seven, seven, our score after one. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And the fair catch is made at about the 27 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over.
Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Second and 10. Wilson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm, but he was more than happy to dissect them with his legs for that first down pickup. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Screenplay set up for Williams. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A good convergence there defensively, only a yard, and it's second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here now, second and nine from the 39-yard line. Wilson now off the bootleg. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A first catch for Judy, good for a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 47. Now Wilson. And this will be incomplete. Offense was moving a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Wilson. Got his man, it's Williams. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 33. A good gain of 14 there and it moves to James. Well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 46 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Open man is the tight end, Troutman. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short game. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Here's Wilson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Wilson. Eluding the pressure right. And he is in 
into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Russell Wilson taking it in from seven yards away. And the Broncos have taken the lead. And that's a sight we feel like we've seen a lot over his career. But remember for Russell Wilson, three in his first year as a Bronco last year and only 15 in the last eight years. But he still knows how to use those wheels when necessary. And he takes care of business right there. Lutz good on the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to 7. So that one a long 11 play drive, and it was Russell Wilson finishing things off with a touchdown run. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Miami set to take over. That 7 0 lead of theirs short lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. And now at this point in the first half, You've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hill. They'll wind up getting 10 back as Ed sets them up for third down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Two are going to throw. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Tongue of Iloa going for it on fourth down. And going deep for Hill. And he's got it inside the 10. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Wow, first and goal, and defensively, all they can do is shake their heads. Not only did they allow the conversion, but a big play as well. I'll tell you what, this is not for the faint of heart right here. Fourth down, this is taking a big risk. But it's as good a play call as you can imagine. And the defense, just not able to come up with the stop they needed. And this is not just a first down, but a big play as well. Here's Mostert. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four. Your front... And he's going to ball his way into the end zone for the Dolphins score. Raheem Mostert with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Dolphins are within an extra point of tying up 
this ball game. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on. Both sides moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams are trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? Good, strong throw and catch right there, and so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. They give it to Williams, running right. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second down, here's Wilson. Trying to drop one in, but it's incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down, and that's a smart move to throw it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And the Dolphins rush gets home, down he goes. A loss of three on a sack made by multiple defenders. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth, both these offenses having their way so far, so maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely, and that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Miami's offense set and ready to go. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. Then confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons, and he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Partner, I think this one went awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. After the interception, here's Wilson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. 
Second and ten now, Wilson. He'll get this to his tight end, Troutman. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Wilson now to throw on third down. And he's going to go down. He sacked back in the 24. That time, Bradley Chubb shooting in there for the sack. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Now Lutz for the field goal try. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. the main field goal lets to kick it away and he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21 yard line out comes the Miami offensive unit now they get set to take over and for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. This drive starting off on the right foot. 18 yards. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Now Tua. Over the middle, he gets it to Barrios. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. It'll be a loss of 10, and it'll bring up second. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And, partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's the game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A run with Mostert up the middle, and he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Jake On is Jake Bailey to send this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. The Broncos going to go on offense now late in this first half. 
as they take over with exactly one minute to go here before intermission. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down, but give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage, but it's only second and short, so that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. On second down, Wilson. A short one of the tight end, Troutman. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw is Wilson. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Second down and a little more than a yard here. From the shotgun, Wilson. And that one too wide and incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Here's Wilson to throw. Steps away to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds the defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Field goal, the difference. 17 14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. Taking it at about the one. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line. For the Broncos offense set to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Now Wilson on first down. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. 
And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door to them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams, and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. On first down, Wilson. And his pass incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Wilson. All in all, no gain on the play, and it'll bring up third. He certainly did his best to find something on that run, but there just wasn't enough time to make it happen. Nice effort there, avoiding the sack and getting back to the line of scrimmage. That one certainly could have ended up worse. Here's third and ten. Now Wilson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. Here's Riley Dixon now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And here comes Berrios. A 41-yard punt, nine on the return. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense him saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Two is throws taken in by Waddle. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. Well, they obviously red man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, right he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. On the handoff, this is Mostert. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. And that is incomplete. Oh, he did everything but hold on to it. 
But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. They'll try it now with Mostert. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. I love those plays. Fourth and one. That's who wants it more this time, the offense. Yeah, there's a lot of hooting and hollering in there, right? A lot of contact and a lot of collisions as they try and find some space. Who's going to drop their hips, gain leverage, and move the other side backwards? We saw it there for the offense getting it done. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and ten. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Alex Singleton making the play defensively. And it has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. From the gun, it's Tua. Pass incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Here's Tua. Complete. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen, but this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. So fourth Jason down, Sanders Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. Sanders' kick is good, and that will tie things at 17 all. Well, maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in. kicks away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Set to take over. The Broncos' offense trots back out. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Now Wilson on second down. Open man is the tight end Troutman. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. A short one of the tight end, Troutman. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Again, Wilson. 
Got his man complete over the middle. It's Williams. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 42. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it. And no adjustment has been made to take it away. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 65 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. On first and 10, it's Wilson. And that's incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Second and 10 now from the 27. Here's Wilson. took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up the third down. But it looked like they marched to the end zone as he had a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now Wilson. And now another one thrown incomplete. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. The kick by Lutz is good. And with that, they take the lead here, 20 to 17. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. The Dolphins ready to take over on offense. The last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Tua sets up to pass it. Open man is Hill. He's got it. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that'll leave him with a third and two. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Third and two. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down.
On first and ten, it's Mostert. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and six. From midfield, here's Tua. That's Waddle. He's got the catch on the out route. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 38-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something and they were supposed to be doing something else. The bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. Trying to get their tight end involved finally. That's the first time that they've looked his way. He's kind of been a forgotten man in this offensive scheme. Yeah, it didn't look his way at all in the first half. And I'll bet you the offense coordinator made a note at the half and said, let's get him involved because he could be a big-time playmaker for us. Tua completing this to Waddle. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. And again, it's Tug of Iloa. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. Sanders' kick is good, and that's going to tie things at 20. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they won't end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. The offense getting set again. We spotlight Javante Williams, the running back. He's toppled the century mark already, receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams shoves him aside, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down and six. Again, it's Williams. 
It'll be a pickup of four, and it winds us down to the end of the third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Dolphins' drive will start deep in their own territory with a first and ten. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and ten at their own 14-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there, a 22. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From the 41, here's a second and five. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. Well, we all know possessions are crucial in a tie game, and let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. The offense on third down, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This will be third and five. Going to the air, tug of Iloa, and that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's what he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. Call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their 25-yard line. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy, and that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They go play action now. Wilson caught left side. Williams. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards. Now it's third and five. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Buried behind the line by Christian Wilkins. And this dominant defensive performance continues.
continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. Now we get Tyreek Hill and the rest of the Miami offense back out there. And I know that they double-teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there. And they'll go backwards right away. Thanks to Frank Clark, that play was doomed from the start. What a job defensively. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage. And now off to the races, down the right side. couple yards deep he'll bring it out of the end zone and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line Denver's offense now set to go they now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter what a big spot for this offense see if they can cobble something together on this drive Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Throwing is Wilson. And that one to the right side and incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy and that'll bring up second down. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 84 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And smartly going into the slide there. Wilson has it up for the first. 
It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart. Took it himself, found a way to reset the downs, and advance the ball. Now Wilson on first down. This one swung out to Williams. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And it'll be second in a couple. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Four yards the pickup, first down. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. He'll drop this down to Williams. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Wilson. That's going to be caught by Judy. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Now it's Wilson. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. That's a staple of this offense. Drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. So from the 25, this is second and five. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he stopped immediately there. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Now Wilson, there's Manhurts, the tight end. And they're able to stop him short. On third and six, they'll only pick up four. A short game that doesn't get on the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. And with the scoreboard against them here in the fourth quarter, this was definitely four down territory. Really nice job there finding a way to get open. And a really nice throw. That sets them up with first and goal. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Williams will score. Touchdown, Broncos. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. 
That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. Now this one setting up for a great finish, all tied in the fourth as the kick's away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Jalen Waddle running out, and that means that the Dolphins ready for another drive on offense. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation, the catches, the yardage, that means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. Second down, here's most of the game. And he'll have the Dolphins first down as he gets this up past the 30. They were not fooling around at all. Were they second and short? And they brought out that heavy package. Almost like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. Getting down to the good stuff, all tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. Now Tua. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. On second down, Mostert. And he'll have the Dolphins first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Short game, short game, last two plays. Who do you think's excited about that? Absolutely, this defense, they're saying go right ahead with those. Plenty of time, all three timeouts still remain. Here's first and 10 now. Tua, on first down, they go with Mostert again. Powerful run, and a well pass midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. They'll come up first and ten here. Throwing Tua. Once again, it's Mostert. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Come up now. This is second and long. Here's Tua. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Tongue of Iloa. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 25 yard line. Get his three timeouts left, right? I think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. 
as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So it all rests now on the right foot of Jason Sanders. This to almost certainly win the football game. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So a big one coming now for Jason Sanders. This to take the lead here in the final minute. And his kick is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the in the final seconds. So they tried to ice him there, but it's fair to say it did not have the intended effect. And I've known kickers that take it as an affront. And there he says, you think you're going to rattle me? Think again. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. One last shot for Wilson. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. 